Thank you all for joining the North Carolina Building Performance Association and RetroTech webinar, Tips and Tricks for HERS Raiders and Energy Auditors. We're happy to have our member Sam Myers here doing the presentation. Um, I'll let him introduce himself a little bit further when he gets into his presentation. But if everyone would please hold their questions until we break at the end of each section, um, questions for Sam or any other retro team tech team members, that would be wonderful. And going with that, Sam, I will hand it over to you and for the webinar. Excellent. Thank you so much. Can you guys hear me okay? I've got your audio over here, and I think everyone else Great. is, um, they've got themselves muted, but I'm sure they're listening in. <laughs> Great. Just wanted to make sure. Thanks, Abby. Well, thanks for having me on today, and uh, thanks for all that you guys do for our industry here, here in North Carolina. Um, this is uh, trick, tips and tricks. It should say uh, tips and tricks, not ticks and tricks to use in the field. Uh, but there's also other stuff in here that you can use outside of the field as well when you're back in the office. So uh, we'll go ahead and kick it off. This is the only salesy thing I have in here, I promise, but I can't not talk about it. Uh, we do have a special going on right now. If you want to upgrade your gauge, if you have a DG700, um, right now one of our DM32 gauges costs uh, 1450 but if you trade in one of your uh, current gauges, uh, you can get it for 995 and that comes with an adapter so you can use it with your TEC fan. And the way I like to describe this gauge, it's like the unlocked iPhone of gauges. So it doesn't limit you to a certain brand. You can use it with both brands uh, of equipment. And um, even setting the certain pressures, if you want to extrapolate, anytime you want to enter in a certain pressure, you just pull up a numerical keypad and you can enter in whatever you want. So uh, there's some really nice features on it and we'll get into a little bit of that later. So a little bit about myself, um, I'm a trainer and educator uh, here at RetroTech. Um, I've conducted hundreds of blower door tests and duct tests in the field. I'm a certified HERS Raider. Uh, uh, formerly, I was a building science specialist at Advanced Energy, where I trained a lot of HERS Raiders and contractors uh, in building science. Um, I'm a North Carolina native, originally from a small town in eastern North Carolina called LaGrange. I'm located in Raleigh now. Um, Back from my consulting days, I still talk with a lot of raiders across the state. Um, they call me all the time with questions, uh, whether if it's equipment related or building science related. And so I uh, invite the, you guys to do the same. So if there's anything I can ever do to help you guys with, feel free to reach out. So just some general things that we're going to go over today. We're going to go over some uh, different ways to take some measurements in the field, diagnostic. We'll go over some gadgets, some new equipment that's hit the market recently. Um, not just our stuff, but other other uh, types of equipment as well. And then just some general things that are interesting that can maybe make you a little bit more productive in the field. So first we'll start off with some apps uh, that you can use. Um, there's new apps coming out every day, and then there's a lot that have come out recently that you can use to uh, help take measurements and things such as that. There's apps that are geared specifically to our industry, and so uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on each one, but really just introduce you to the fact that they're there and so that you can research them on your own and uh, see which ones uh, be able to fit you the best. And a lot of this has to do with what we call bring your own brain technology. And by that, it means it hooks up to your smartphone, whether it's Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. We have our own other, uh, other companies that make diagnostic tools are doing it as well, such as Dwyer with their smart hood. Uh, Testo uh, is using um, Bluetooth as well for a lot of their measurement tools. And so this, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of Residential Energy Dynamics. This isn't an app yet. You have to log into their website, but they're, uh, from what I've heard, they have an app in the making. And if you guys haven't used this yet, this is a really great resource to use for calculating ventilation or really any kind of building science calculation that you may need. Um, it's you can think of it, they probably have a calculation for it. And so this is one just to kind of keep in, uh, keep in your toolbox to use uh, if you guys get stumped or you need to figure out something on the fly, if you have an internet connection, uh, this is a great resource to have. And so this is just kind of a brief rundown of some of the things that you can calculate using their website, whether if it's electrical usage or ventilation or moisture, or air leakage, uh, it's all there. Uh, Construction Instruction is another one. This is an app you can download on your phone. Uh, they also have a website, but uh, 
general uh, construction or building science stuff that you can find in here, whether if it's definitions or uh, methods of installing certain building materials. Uh, it's a really nice resource to have if you need to look something up on the fly. Um, SketchUp is something that we use quite a bit at RetroTech. It's a free uh, uh, 3D design uh, program that you can use. It's not an app. It's, you got to have it on your PC. But the thing is, is that Energy Logic has uh, designed scripts for SketchUp. And so if you have house plans that you're looking at, you can enter them into SketchUp and have a 3D model of that plan that you're that you're looking at. And so if you're dealing with a client and you want to present them with something that looks really professional, this is a really good way that you can do it. You can also uh, import your information for frame rate into here as well and it'll draw out a nice 3D model for you. And just an example of some of the stuff that you can do for uh, with SketchUp. Uh, this is a uh, an animation that we took from Building Science uh, Corp. <clears throat> just to show how moisture moves through a wall, uh, just looking at diffusion and then diffusion plus air leakage. And so this is something that was drawn in SketchUp just to kind of give people an idea of how air leakage really accelerates the amount of moisture that you can get through a wall assembly. And this is a free program you can download. It's designed by Google. And so whenever I give presentations, a lot of times I'll, uh, I'll take stuff like this and build it in SketchUp, and it just makes a nice visual representation of the message that I'm trying to, to give. So you can see here, you can really give some nice visuals of how much moisture you're talking about that can come through a one inch hole. And I know I'm moving a little fast here. I've got a lot of content. And so, like I said, I'm not spending a whole lot of time on each one of these. I just want to introduce you to the fact that these are out there and so that you can research them on your own. Um, and so Pronto Forms uh, is another one here. This is a great form builder, PDF form builder. And so if you have your own, uh, building performance program that you run in-house, or if you're trying to come up with your own process for uh, in-house for, for doing um, energy audits or HERS ratings, this is a great tool that you can use to build your own form uh, to give your raters that are going out into the field just to kind of keep track of things internally. So it's very customizable. You can upload pictures and things such as that. And so it's, it's really easy to use. So um, Construction Master Pro is kind of similar to Construction Instruction, except for it has this really nice calculator feature and it's really designed around that. And so you have different construction calculators that you can pull up on this app, 25 bucks in both the Apple Store and uh, on Google Play. And it also has a nice feature to look up certain definitions. So, for example, if you don't know what a jack rafter is, you can look it up and then it can point out an example of what that is. Um, and it's also a good way to point out visuals to a customer if you want to explain something to them. So now we're going to get into some different measurement apps. Um, if you're doing a HERS rating on an existing home and you don't have plans, you got to walk around and take measurements. And so now there's some tools out there that can make that a little bit easier. So photo measurement apps, the way that these work is you take a picture of a side of a building. And if you have a known measurement, such as a doorway or like the width of a garage door, you can enter that in and then it can give you the measurements of everything else in that photo. So for example, here we took a picture of the side of this house. We knew this was 18.5 feet. So that way it was able to give us the height of the rest of this building over here. So sometimes this, this can be a much quicker way just to find that measurement that you're looking for. And last time I checked, this app was around eight bucks. Partometer 3D uh, or cam measure <clears throat> kind of does something similar, but this is nice because um, it'll give you angles as well. Image meter is another one that kind of works the same way. It's a photo measurement app. So if you know the height of that window, uh, it'll give you dimensions of other things in the room as well. And it will give you angles, um, heights of the wall, things such as that. And this one's around five bucks.
And so there's other photo measurement apps as well that work differently. So you can scan the room. Um, there's another one where you can, so for example, flying ruler here, uh, you can move your phone down a wall. And so if you wanted to measure the distance of a wall, you just put your phone on the wall, walk all the way down it, and it will give you the measurement of that wall. And then can measure works a little bit differently. So in this app, you tell it, uh, you tell the app how tall you are, and then it makes an estimate of where you're going to hold your phone out in front of you. So it takes that measurement of the phone from the ground, and it sounds a little iffy, but it actually gets things pretty accurate. And there's other apps that work this way too. So uh, Stanley Tools has their own version of it called uh, Smart Measure Pro. And uh, Stanley Tools also has one called Magic Plan. And last time I checked, this one was free. Uh, this one's kind of cool because you can scan the room with it. And what it does, you, you tell it where the corners are. And then it's able to map out that room for you in a plan. So this one works pretty well. Then once you go around and you point out where the, corner, where the corners are in the room, uh, it'll give you this nice visual uh, layout. And so you can actually walk around and do a whole house that way if you wanted to. That way, if you have an existing home where you don't have plans, you can walk through and make your own. And of course, laser measurements. Uh, if you're doing HERS ratings in the field or an existing home and you haven't been using a laser distance measure, um, you're, you're probably missing out because it really makes life a lot easier. Uh, there's some Bluetooth options out now. So this is one that Ryubi makes that uh, attaches right to your phone and connects Bluetooth. Or I'm sorry, this one actually plugs into your headphone jack. And if you have a newer phone that doesn't have a headphone jack, that's also an option for Bluetooth, I believe. And so this is just a laser distance measure that communicates with your phone. And, uh, it works pretty nice. And Bosch has their own version of it, too. Bosch makes some really nice tools. So this uh, it puts out a Bluetooth signal, connects to your phone, and keeps track of all your measurements. So that way, once you get back into the office, um, you can put together a, a nice plan and, and really know what you have for an existing home. And so, yes, you can download their app and help put the plan together for you once you have your measurements in. So this one, this is one that's really nice. This was originally developed by James Hardy. It was called Contractor's Eye. I believe it's called Hover now. Uh, this one's a little pricey. Um, I can't remember what the exact price of this one is now, but the way this works is that you go on the exterior of the house and you take a picture of each side. And so you walk around the house, take a photo of each side of the house, and you give it one known measurement on each side. And what it will do is it will give you a 3D model of that whole house with uh, all kinds of measurements that you need. So that way, if you have a complicated house that has vaulted ceilings, or a sealed attic and you need to know the volume of that attic space, you can figure that out pretty easily. So now you can find those, those volumes of those weird spaces that you can get into that you may not be able to access well from the inside of the house. So this is a, a really nice app to use um, if this is something that you come across often. And if you, uh, if you do have plans, if it's new construction, uh, Foxit PDF is a, uh, something that you can download free onto your PC. And basically the way this works is it's, it's a PDF reader, kind of like Adobe if you use that. But it has a uh, option to uh, match the scale of the plans. And so you can tell it you know, what the scale of your plans are. And then you can draw this red line around and it'll calculate the perimeter for you. It'll calculate the area for you. You can also do distance measuring. So if you look at a sectional drawing, um, you can tell it you know, what part of that wall you want to see a measurement for. It'll measure it for you and get it right. And so this is a really good way to check behind plans as well, because as I've done plan reviews in the past, I've seen a lot of measurements that have come from CAD that have really not been correct. So this is just a good way to get it right exactly every time. So those apps kind of looked at actual physical measurements of the building to help out with plan reviews. 
So now we'll kind of get into more of some diagnostic stuff. So this is an app called MeasureQuick, and this was developed by Jim Bergman. Uh, he's the same guy that has Redfish Tools, if you've ever heard of that. And uh, uh, if you've ever heard of iManifold, that was another brainchild of his. And so what MeasureQuick, what it's essentially trying to do is it's trying to take all of these tools that are using a wireless connection and then put all that data in one place so that you can um, take it to fill out all kinds of checklists later on, uh, to put it in other software, uh, and to have everything all in one spot. And so, especially right now, it's set up really well for HVAC contractors. So if you're doing refrigeration or a system evacuation, or if you're testing electrical stuff, it'll have all of those readings in one spot for you. So you can go in, you can select your tools. So right now, I know they have Testo set up, and of course, Redfish, because that's uh, another one of Jim's companies, iManifold as well. and um, you can you can connect to your tools. You can uh, pull data from your probes, and uh, you can have your, all of your measurements documented. And so this is something that RetroTech is actually going to be a part of in the future. So I know we're working with them now. And so um, the goal is to be able to run a blower door test. You can do a duct leakage test, or you can take your static pressure. That way. Um, you can go ahead and auto-populate your Energy Star verification checklist because everybody loves filling that out manually, right? So um, right now it's set up really well where an HVAC contractor can fill up their checklist on it because there's tools available where they can do that. And uh, our goal is to be able to have the rater be able to do the same thing for their checklist as well. So it's not available right now for us, but hopefully it'll be something in the future. And it also geolocates. Uh, really, really cool app, and I definitely see this uh, developing more and more as, uh, as years come. Uh, Energy Star also has a Raider app that works really well. Um, it's a good way for you to keep up with all your houses, uh, all your checklists. So instead of having a manual checklist that you take out, it's a good way to keep all of that information in one app. So you can see here, uh, you have all these different addresses. It'll show you how far along uh, each house is, if you have a lot of them going on at one time. <clears throat> uh, it also uh, has a nice uh, visual representation of um, as far as you know your foundation and floors, ceilings and roofs. If you want to go back and look at stuff like that, you can. You can enter in uh, all your duct test data, things such as that, and just have it stored right there on your phone. And so, uh, so as far as HVAC load calc, there's another one out there called Cool Calc. And basically, what it lets you do is you can uh, look at a house uh, on Google. It works this kind of the same way as Google Earth. That way, you can find it and you can draw an outline of that space and do a quick block load. I definitely don't recommend doing um, your uh, your everyday manual J this way, but this is just kind of a way to get a, a good idea of maybe what size system you would need. Um, I believe WriteSoft has a version of this as well, but um, definitely not something to rely on for day-to-day -day use, but it's kind of cool to know that it's out there. And so this is another one that's not really an app. This is something that you would download offline and have on your PC, but uh, Energy Star came out with a energy usage and payback calculator. And it's cool because it's basically it's just a raw Excel form. And so it's very customizable. Um, it adds, it lets you add a number of air conditioners and compare them to the uh, Energy Star equivalent. So that way, if you're doing a system change out, you can see uh, what the savings would be. And so this is what it would look like. Uh, you can tell it how many, uh, how many units you have, uh, how many tons, that has a programmable thermostat, and then you can put in the data for the replacement that you want to do, and it'll let you know uh, what your energy savings will be. So, pretty cool tool that's out there. It's free to use and download. So, Vernon House has a series of apps called House Smart Apps. They actually developed one for our DM32 gauge. And so, if you ever get one of our gauges and it's you're still new to it, you can have this pocket guide on your phone at all times where you can. Uh, pull out our quick guide that comes from us. Um, you can have, you can access some of our videos that we have online just right off your phone. So uh, that was nice of them to put that together for us. 
they also have another one called Building Analysts. And it has some nice calculators in it, so you can do ASHRAE 62.2 calculation in it for 2013. Uh, there's some other calculations on there as well. Uh, basic definitions, so um, if you're doing building science stuff a lot, you need calculations on the fly, this is a good one to have. This is another handy one if you're doing uh, taking a lot of pictures in the field that you have to record. One of those things we have to record as HERS raters is the orientation of the house. And so this is an app that automatically does that for you. So it's called Solocator. It's a dollar. What it does is it puts the orientation of any, any photograph you take. And so right when you upload your pictures, you have to send it to your provider. It has this nice compass at the top that lets you know which direction uh, that picture was taken. So that was just kind of a, a quick and dirty rundown of some different apps that are out there just to kind of help in the build. Um, did we have any questions uh, about any of those? Yeah, we can open I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on for everyone. Um, we've had a few people log on. So Sam, thank you for that overview of the intro to all those neat apps, everything from diagnostics to 3D modeling. That's really, really awesome. Um, and like I said, um, there are a few people that logged on and we can open it up for questions um, until we move on to the next section. Also, anytime you want to ask a question while Sam is presenting, you can use the chat box. So feel free to either ask a question via chat or um, we can take questions now before we move on. Sometimes no questions are good questions. I guess you explained everything perfectly, Sam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that was just kind of a quick intro to each app. So um, yeah, it's definitely. just good good to know that they're out there. You can try them out. And again, I'm always available if you do have questions later on. Great. So we'll, now we'll get into some gauge assistance apps. These are apps that actually connect to your gauge. And uh, these are uh, apps that we have to work with our DM32 uh, manometer. And so we'll get into some of that. So gauge remote is a really cool app. So this is the this is what the screen would look like on your DM32 gauge. And uh, this is a touch screen interface. And basically what Gauge Remote does is that it mirrors that exact same screen onto your phone. So our gauge is already kind of set up like a smartphone. It has this kind of the same dimensions. And so for our development team, it just made sense just to copy that exactly. So that way the user doesn't have to learn a new interface as they're uh, taking tests in the field. And this is two-way control, so it doesn't rob you of control from your gauge. So you can still control things from your gauge, and it'll mirror those readings on your phone. So you can control them from either spot. So this is really handy if you're uh, doing smoke testing on ductwork, uh, which I have a little video about that here in a second. Or if you're doing uh, thermal imaging, you can have your phone in one hand and your thermal camera in the other. That way you can ramp up or slow down your fan and not have to keep running back and forth to your blower door. So here's just a, a quick demo of how this can work. Oh, well, we don't have audio, do we? That's because I called in on my phone. Well, unfortunately, I won't be able to show that. Um, I will be posting this video on YouTube if you guys want to see it. Uh, for whatever reason, I had to call in on my phone today because my computer audio wasn't cooperating. So unfortunately, I won't be able to to share that one with you. But, uh, but basically what it does, that's the idea. What I was doing, I was up uh, in an attic with an air handler. Uh, I had my smoke device. I had my uh, duct tester down below. It was pressurizing the ducts. So that way I didn't have to keep running up and down the ladder to adjust fan speed or have a second person with me. Uh, I was able to remotely control my fan up from the attic and then go around with my phone in one hand and my smoking device in the other and find leaks in the air handler. So that was generally the idea of what that was. Um, we have another one that you can download on your PC called Virtual Gauge. And basically it does kind of what Gauge Remote does, but it puts it on your PC. And you can have several gauges going at one time if you want to, if you're doing like a multi-fan test. But uh, one thing that this is really handy for, if you're doing training, if you're training other raiders, um, this is a good way to just really blow your screen up on a projector. 
or if you're uh, if you're working with a customer and you're explaining what these numbers mean, uh, if you want to look a little bit more professional, you can have this on your laptop and go through and explain what certain readings mean as you move through the house. So like this is being used in a classroom setting here. So um, so when I go out and do trainings, a lot of times I'll hook this up and kind of go through the different functions of the gauge. So I can't not talk about our cloud. Uh, this is technology that Retrotech introduced to the industry several years ago, and uh, and it's an automated testing app. If you guys haven't heard about this yet, and basically what it does, it hooks your phone up to your gauge and allows you to automatically run your blower door or duct test, and then it saves all of your results. And so you can you can go in and choose whatever standards you're testing to. So uh, we recently added Re um, ResNet 380 in there. So this way you can run a multi-point blower door test really easy right off your phone and uh, not have to stop and adjust things. And it also geolocates your location uh, using Zillow. And if it's new construction, there's a switch there. You can say, hey, this is a new house. And then you can enter the, the data in yourself. It also pulls local weather data. So it pulls your outside temperature. So the only thing you need to add in as far as temperature goes is the indoor temp. And so these are the different options that you can choose. Like I said, ResNet 380 is in there as well, or you can just do a basic blower door test or ICC, uh, or if you're just doing it for weatherization, you can do that as well. So like I said earlier, you can choose single point or multi-point. Um, as you know now, if you do a single point test, blower door test with ResNet 380, you've got to take this 10% penalty, which is a real bummer. So uh, now there's a way to do multi-point without ha having to do all this additional math or having to hook up a laptop to it. Um, you can just run it right off of your phone. And uh, actually, I have a video of myself doing this uh, with a radar down uh, in the sand hills. And uh, the entire test took 10 minutes. Um, the gauge lets us know when we got to change our ring out. Or if you're using a Minneapolis fan, you change your ring. If you're using our fan, uh, you would adjust your range, uh, range plugs. So um, you can pause the test, make the adjustments you need, hit resume, and it picks up where it left off. So it's, it's really nice and really user friendly. You can also do other tests with it as well. So our gauge uh, cooperates well with the TEC exhaust fan flow meter. And so you can take those readings and record it on, iCl on uh, our cloud. You can do room to room pressures, uh, static pressures, and flows as well. This way you can take all your measurements and record everything on uh, our cloud. And so one thing that's going to develop from this um, that we should see within the next year or so is that your uh, HERS rating uh, energy modeling software, such as RimRate and Ecotrope, one thing that they're working on now is being able to export data from our cloud so that you can automatically populate your energy model. So any of your, any of your readings that you take that you would enter in to RimRate or Ecotrope, whichever one you use, it would already be there once you open it up. So we're not there yet. Um, I haven't heard much of an update on that recently, but uh, I know that's something that both companies are working on. So this is just an example, just a couple of screenshots if we were going to uh, test some bath fans. And what's nice about this is that you can customize your own target. And it's not just for bath fans as well, it's for blower doors and duct tests. Right when you go in to set up your test, you tell it what your target is, that way, when you get your report at the end, right at the top, it tells you if you pass or fail. So there's an example of a report from a, from a blower door test there. So right at the top in green, it said this one passed. And so this is really nice to hand off to your provider because um, it makes their life a whole lot easier. And that way, they won't uh, stay in your hair as much. And then for standard 380, um, before you set a test, you have to go in and confirm certain things and make sure that the test was set up to the standard, such as making sure windows are shut and interior doors are open. And so you actually have to uh, physically confirm that, and then that's reflected in your report. And so that way your, your provider can see, yes, this was done uh, to the standard. So there's a nice data platform. You can also download our cloud on your PC if you wanted to. And so you can go in and keep track of all your tests, uh, all your testers uh, that are uh, using our cloud in your office. And then the data is always on, on our server and always available and, and it's always uh, held securely.
So that was our, our Gauge Assistance apps. Uh, there's uh, two apps that we have now, and then one for PEC, which was Virtual Gauge. Um, do we have any questions about any of those? Awesome, thanks, Sam. Um, I did receive one question in the chat. Um, if we could send out the video links, and um, I responded to everyone and said that we'll be sending out a recording of this webinar as well as all of the external links. Um, and we're getting some few comments saying that they're all awesome and um, getting good feedback so far. So we can head into, if there's no questions, we can head into the last section of the webinar into the tools, gadgets, and et cetera. Great, yeah, and I'm happy to share this presentation as well. That way the video will be embedded in there. Um, and we're gonna put th these videos that I have in here, we'll also have posted on YouTube at some point. And so we have our own YouTube channel that has all of our past retro tech rep webinars as well. So you can always find our content there. All right, so we'll, we'll dive into tools and gadgets. And so this is the uh, this is the smoker that I was talking about earlier. This is one that uh, it's made by Look Solutions, and uh, we're a distributor for them uh, for for our industry. And basically, what this is is a handheld fog machine. And uh, you can see here it fits right in the palm of your hand, and it basically works like an e-cig. It's a it's a vaporizer. And so you just hold the button down, and it puts out this really nice plume of vapor, and it and it hangs in the air really nicely, like a like any other of the old school smokers would. Uh, the big difference here is that this is non-toxic. Um, it's, it's safe to breathe in. It's not like the old school titanium tetrachloride pens that corrode metal and hurt your insides. So um, everything comes in this nice case. It has two rechargeable batteries. It has these cartridges here that you can refill with uh, the vapor fluid. It even has a little remote that you can attach to it with a six-foot cable. So if you wanted to attach it to a boom to get up to a higher spot, you can. It's a really handy tool. It's, uh, it's really been a hit. And it has a big brother that's also called the Power Tiny that you can actually fill a whole room with vapor or a whole duct system with vapor and run a duct test or a blower door and see how that smoke behaves in the room. So just a little clip there, um, testing smoke under a doorway. We're pressurizing that house and uh, seeing how well that or how poorly the bottom of that door was sealed. Uh, this is another clip. I uh, went up with a company, one of our customers, uh, up to Richmond, Virginia, to Virginia Commonwealth University. They just built a new dormitory building there that's uh, 12 stories high. And so we went and did a big blower door test there. Where we hooked up 17 blower door fans. And so as we were running the fans, we were depressurizing and we were going up uh, to the top floor to see if we could find leaks at the air barrier. And this building, the air barrier was at the roof deck. And so the ceiling is actually below the air barrier and so there's a penetration to the ceiling that you can see here and so with the blower doors running you can see that it's pulling a lot of air down and pulling that smoke so there are some significant leaks in here and uh, doing the same thing here at this light fixture you can see that there were some uh, pretty significant leaks in the air barrier at the roof and uh, that's what part of our setup looked like this is on the bottom floor and a double two double doorways we had 12 fans set up here we had three fans set up on the roof and then we had two other fans set up uh, in some separate apartments in the building as well. So um, this is our uh, our 6,000 model fan. And so with one of these fans, you can uh, get up to a little over 8,000 CFM. So each fan has its own uh, variable frequency drive. And so for commercial buildings, we have to pressurize and depressurize. And it's going to be a multi-point test every time. And the way it works is it ramps the fans up to a high pressure and then brings them back down. And so it's pretty fun to watch once you ramp these fans up. It's like being in a NASCAR race. And then just some tricks for a rough end test. If you guys ever test ducts at rough end, uh, you can use couch cushions. That foam actually works really well. If you cut it out into rectangles, they pop right in there. And uh, it doesn't really leak through the material all that much, not to where it would really make a difference. So cheap and easy way if you don't want to spend a lot of time going around and taping up supplies. Uh, just get some foam blocks and plug them up. And then if you have a duct test, one of our duct testers, we have a battery pack option. So if you don't want to have to worry about running an extension cord from the power supply outside and running it all the way inside, uh, you can bring your own little power supply that plugs right up into the fan. 
And this is a trick that I learned, uh, kind of discovered myself when I was doing a lot of rough end duck tests several years ago. Uh, I noticed that as I was working with other raiders, everybody kind of had their own way of getting it, uh, attaching their flex up to the return box. And so the best way that I've found is using crawlspace tape. And basically what you do, say you have a return in your ceiling, uh, typically if they do a good job, it's gonna have a lot of mastic around it, like you see here. So that here they use some white mastic. And especially on humid days in North Carolina, duck masks, no matter what kind you have, it doesn't stick well to wood. And it definitely doesn't stick well to wood that has mastic on it. And so this crawlspace tape is a really good way to make that cooperate. So that way you can go around your edges with the crawlspace tape, put a little uh, brace in here in the middle, and then use your duck mask to, to finish it off. And that way it'll hold up for a long time. And so the duck mask tape that we sell is this blue kind here. And it's nice because if you get it stuck to itself, you can actually pull it back apart in most cases. As you know, with a lot of other tapes, if it gets stuck to itself, it's a goner. So this stuff you can actually salvage if that happens. And then what you see here, this is our clear flange that comes with our duck tester. And these little knobs here, our hooks on the other side. And so if you're uh, doing a test at final and you have a return in the ceiling, these hooks will stick into the grate and it'll stick itself to the grate. So that way you're not holding the flange up with one hand and trying to tape it with another. So it uh, makes life a little bit easier. So you can see here, I finished up my setup here to do a duck test and it's uh, holding up nicely. So that crawl space tape, is, uh, once I figured that out, I, I never used anything else. And that's actually tape that we sell at Retrotech. So if you wanted to buy duck masks from us, you can add on a roll of that. And um, the tape that we sell has these nice jagged edges, uh, which makes it really easy to tear off. So I'll show you one little trick too that some people don't really know about. Um, it's not ResNet 380 or BPI approved, but it's a good way to see if your ventilation is working. And so this works if you have um, whole house ventilation that's using an air cycler that has a motorized damper and a separate air cycler switch like this Honeywell here. Uh, there's air cycler is also a brand that's used commonly as well as April Air. And so this is when you have uh, your ventilation tied into your, your return side and then your other end of your ventilation duct is connected outside to pull outside air in. And so it should be filtered somewhere. And so this is an example of it having being attached to the return box and filtered there with a 12 by 12 filter. And so what this is commonly referred to as is the Thule chart. Uh, John Thule is the guy that kind of introduced this concept in the in industry years ago. Uh, I actually worked with him at Advanced Energy some years back. But um, the way this works is that if you have a small or tight house that has a blower door of 1100 or smaller, this X axis is your blower door number. Uh, this Y axis is your airflow of your ventilation. And what you do is, say you already have your blower door number, say you have a blower door number of 1,000. What you'll do is you'll hook your gauge up to read the inside pressure of the house with respect to outside. And so what you'll do is you'll run the air handler fan on without pulling any ventilation. And so you'll have the ventilation damper shut or taped off. And then you'll see what your interior pressure is. And then you'll record that number. And then you'll do it again with the ventilation open. So theoretically, it should be uh, producing a positive pressure in the house. So you should have a pressure, uh, pressure differential of maybe just a couple pascals um, if it's working properly. And so what you do is uh, this key up here that has the different colored lines. So say our blower door number is 1,000, and we had a pressure difference of, of one pascal. So this one is this dark orange. So I go to 1,000 to my blower door number. I go up until I see this dark orange line. Okay, so that's, I'll run it back over to this y-axis. So that tells me that my ventilation is pulling about 78 CFM of airflow. And so that's just a way that you can get a good idea of, of what your ventilation is doing without really having to hook anything up to it. Again, it's not... Uh, approved by ResNet or BPI, but uh, some cases you have a two-story house on the slab that has the ventilation run into the gable end on the top or up coming in from the roof and it's kind of a pain to get up to it or you can't get up to it. This is just a way to kind of check behind to make sure it is working. So um, I have some copies of this uh, with instructions on it. If anybody wants it, just let me know.
So I talked a little bit earlier about thermal cameras. Uh, there's all kinds of cameras out there now. They, they attach to your phone. They're smaller ones that take a regular photograph that overlay a thermal image on top of that. So you can kind of see both at the same time. Um, they've really come a long way. So here's some examples of that. FLIR makes a nice one that pops onto your phone. Uh, they also make this one too that has its own screen on it. I think this thing's about 500 bucks. But the thing about it is they're not, uh, the resolution isn't nearly as good as one of your more high dollar cameras. I did a webinar with a guy named Jay Bowen a couple of weeks ago who's a thermal imaging uh, trainer. And his advice for buying a thermal camera was uh, put your money towards resolution. Buy as much resolution as you can because the other features that you would pay for otherwise in the camera can typically be made up for uh, in the software that comes with the camera. So um, if you're really trying to find a good camera, just buy resolution without the bells and whistles on it, and then that stuff you can add to your, your pictures later on. So that was his advice for, for purchasing a camera. And uh, he shared some really nice photos from some of the stuff he's found in the field as well. For example, um, you can use a thermal imaging camera to find moisture problems in walls. So uh, this is a photograph of a wall that had uh, a leak at the base of the wall. So this, here's your bottom plate here. And what Jay said is that moisture travels up drywall one inch per hour. So you can tell this wall has been saturated uh, for quite a while. And he said you can tell it's moisture because it doesn't follow the same rules as insulation. So insulation is going to be in 16 inch phase and it would have dividers if it was poor insulation. This just saturates the drywall. So you can tell it's kind of a consistent line all the way across. So that's how you can tell it's a moisture issue. So I thought that was interesting. I figured I would share that here. Some other tools that are out there, AAB, um, Automatic Airflow Balancing, was recently purchased by a company called CPS. And they make some really cool tools. They've come out with some really neat stuff over the past few years. Um, this is one uh, little anemometer that you can pop into your headphone jack on your phone. Um, if your phone doesn't have one of those, I'm, I'm pretty sure they make a Bluetooth model as well. Um, and they actually made a flow hood based on this. So you pop this little anemometer and your base of your flow hood. And the flow hood has an air straightener in it, which makes it more accurate than a lot of other passive flow hoods that are out there. And then instead of having its own interface, it just has an app that communicates with your phone and you pop your phone in there and you can get your reading. So this flow hood is only 400 bucks and it works really well. And uh, it's been really popular this year. I know a lot of people have been picking them up and using the field and having some good results with it. This is another tool that I really like. I have one of these uh, to measure. I know I've been having some crawl space issues and been putting it off. And so this has been telling me uh, how bad it really is. This is uh, their humidity data logger, temperature and humidity data logger. And it's pretty much just a key fob. It's super small. And uh, CPS has an app called CPS Link that will link to all of the tools that they make. And so this puts out a really nice display of uh, what the humidity is in the space that it's measuring, as well as the temperature, what the dew point is, and what it feels like. And then it'll actually log over time and tell you where you are within the comfort zone, uh, how the room is behaving as far as moisture and temperature goes. And for 60 bucks, it's not really, that's not bad at all for one of those. So uh, that's another popular tool that they've come out with recently. So uh, this is a feature on our DM32 gauge. It's called the whole flow. If you've ever noticed on our product line, we don't currently make a exhaust fan flow meter, but our gauge allows you to make your own. And so you can use it with the TEC exhaust fan flow meter, or you can just take a box and cut a hole in it and tell the gauge how big that hole is. And that way you have your own. And so there's a method here. Uh, you can actually make one out of a cardboard box. Uh, if you, that's only really handy if you have a really high ceiling and you're working by yourself. That way you can take a ladder, go up, tape it up over the fan, climb back down and take your reading. And then if you're measuring kitchen hoods, uh, you can build your own kind of shallower box if you need to. That Sometimes those are kind of hard to get up under. If you're dealing with the same like, microwave exhaust over and over, you can build your own custom box that fit, uh, fits under that. You can build it out of blue board and seal it up and, and cut a hole in it. And as long as you have your hole and you know the exact area, you can plug that area into the gauge and now you have your own exhaust fan flow meter. And if you notice, um, what we recommend is hooking your, your flow meter up to both channels of the gauge. 
And so whether if you make your own flow meter or you use the TEC exhaust box, they're not accurate outside of eight pascals or negative eight pascals. They have to be within that negative eight to positive eight pascal range. And so it's always good to really monitor your pressure to make sure that you're on the right setting because if you get outside of that, you don't have an accurate reading. So it's always good to connect your two channels together so you can get pressure and flow to see where you are. And that's just the calculation that the gauge does for you whenever you pop in the, uh, the area into the gauge. When you uh, select that whole flow option, a numerical keypad comes up, you pop in the area, you hit set, and you're ready to test it. And this is one that I built myself. Um, this is an exhaust fan flow meter that I can also use as a pressure pan. And all I did was I bought a plastic container. I cut the top of it off. This gasket around the bottom is a half inch pipe insulation that has the adhesive edges on it. Cut it at an angle to give me a nice uh, smooth gasket all the way around. I, uh, I got some um, four inch clean out adapters that you would find in the plumbing aisle at Home Depot and I cut them down so they fit. And then uh, this is one of our range plugs off of our blower door. And so that way I can plug them up and use it, uh, plug both of them up and use it as a pressure pan if I want to. So for 50 bucks, I built two tools in one. And uh, I actually tested it out. We, uh, we sell a uh, powered flow hood called the Flow Finder. And it's the most accurate fl low flow hood you can get on the market. And so I tested it with that. And I also tested it with the TEC exhaust fan flow meter. And this fell right between the two. So you can actually make a pretty accurate exhaust fan flow meter by yourself. And uh, I actually just made an instructional video that I'm going to be posting online later, uh, either today or tomorrow. And so this is a, uh, running with the, uh, the TEC exhaust fan flow meter. That's also a, an option that you can choose in our gauge, as well as all of, the, all of their fans that they make as well. And so um, the difference between our gauge and the TEC gauges is that you, you want to plug into the reference, uh, not the input. So it's kind of the other way around. So the way we see it is that the, where your gauge is, is what it's, it's measuring where you're holding the gauge, and then the reference is wherever that hose is going to. So that's just the way we think about it. And so uh, that's what I have. That's the end. Uh, like I said earlier, if you're looking for more, we do our own webinars. I try to do a webinar once a month. It doesn't always end up working out that way. Uh, things get busy. But um, we try to schedule something at least once a month. And so there's our, uh, there's our link to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have all kinds of stuff up there. And it's not really just product promotion. We cover all kinds of building science and diagnostic test options. Um, I always try to bring guest speakers on as well that are experts and other uh, parts of the industry. And uh, I just want to put my contact info up here as well. That's my cell phone number. Um, I'm located in Raleigh, North Carolina. If there's anything that RetroTech makes that you guys have been wanting to try out, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll come meet you in the field somewhere, meet you at your office. Uh, I'm happy to, to share whatever I have. Um, we're also trying to put together a gauge loaner program so that if you do want to try out one of our gauges for free for a month, um, that way you can do that. It's not set up yet, but if you're located in North Carolina, I have a couple. So if you want to try one out, just get up with me and um, I can get one in your hand. So that's what I have. Um, yeah. Did we have any more questions? We can open up for questions for um, audio or the chat box. I know some audios aren't linking today, but if there are any questions, and I just want to take this time to thank Sam. Um, through all the apps, tools, and gadgets, and do-it-yourself <laughs> tools. Um, it's truly awesome stuff. So thank you for sharing your insight, your tips and tricks. And um, it was really, really helpful. And I'm sure, um, I know I learned a lot, and I'm sure um, all of our attendees did as well. So thank you, Sam. Yeah, thanks, guys, for having me on. Of course. And I don't see any questions coming up in the chat, but um, as I mentioned before, we're going to be sharing this webinar um, with all of the attendees and our members. It'll be coming out in the next member newsletter on Monday, so you can share it with your colleagues and industry friends. Um, and then I'll have Sam also send me all of those YouTube links and um, external links that he shared with us, so you all will have access to those as well to dig a little deeper and do your own research. Um, but with that, thank you again, Sam and RetroTech, for um, facilitating this webinar, and we hope you all have a great Thursday and a good weekend, 
And that's all for me, Sam. If you have anything else, I think um, we're good. Oh, we do have one question from Dave. Um, okay. Let's see. Dan is asking, our cloud is great and quick, and he's using it all the time. Oh, more of a comment, but um, yeah, that shout out to our cloud. So um, definitely okay, a great. lot of familiar tools and apps being used um, through our members. Great, yeah, that's good to hear. And if, uh, if, if you don't have a question now and you have one up down the road, uh, always feel free to reach out. You can call me, shoot me an email. Um, I'm happy to help. Great. Thank you so much, Sam. And um, with that, we'll log off and I'll be sending this out shortly. All righty. Well, thanks again, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.